Hi everybody, hope you're good. It's Becky here uh, and today I'm going to tell you some cool stuff about an awesome genre of music called Britpop. So, in my opinion, Britpop was the last fundamental, iconic music movement before the dot-com era, which is the era that we all live in now, eh, where we can easily access music through streaming and on the internet and downloads. Eh, so looking back now, it feels like Britpop really defined kind of the optimism of the 1990s. The age of Britpop, however, only actually lasted a few years, between around 1993 to 1997-98. But the Cool Britannia iconography, which actually came after the end of Britpop, has become the main lingering image of the 1990s. Fleeting, carefree, optimistic, guitar-driven pop, where rock stars had tea with the Prime Minister. What an oddly ironic time to be a young, rebellious musician. So I was born in the 1980s and I'm a child of the 1990s, so I've put together five things I think you need to know about Britpop. The 1980s and the Thatcher years were a time of economic hardship for a lot of working class people in the UK, which left the overall mood of the country in a bit of a slump. The early 90s saw movements like the EDM and the rave scene explode which embodied the idea of escapism from everyday life. This kind of music would infiltrate the pop charts in the form of bands like The Prodigy and Chemical Brothers in later years who melded the rave concept with punk lyrics and searing choruses. At the same time, rock and indie music was starting to light up across the country. Madchester bands such as the Happy Mondays and Stone Roses dominated the charts at the end of the 80s and introduced a social commentary to British rock music that was more authentic and local than its glam rock predecessors. Further south, dream and indie pop bands like the Cocteau Twins and the Chameleons paved the way for a more sophisticated and melodic sonic landscape, which saw bands like Bell and Sebastian, Mogwai and Primal Scream gain success. All Scottish by the way and blueprints for the witty, ironic sounds of some of the main players in the Britpop scene. The almost soap opera style rivalry between Manchester working class band Oasis and London art school band Blur was the perfect narrative for a music debate that would unite the nation. Just like the Coke, Pepsi or McDonald's and Burger King pop clap culture rivalries, whether you liked Blur or Oasis was a character assessment. If you loved Oasis, you loved a heart back to the rock and roll sounds of the Beatles and John Lennon, fresh, honest, emotional and wholly simplistic songs that made for people to instantly connect with. If you loved Blur, then you were looking for a more artisan sound, witty, one-liners and a general irony that jeered at, satirised and celebrated 1990s Britain. Blur's Damon album, who went on to create the cartoon band Gorillaz, had an excellent eye for PR and moved the release date of their song Country House to the same day as Oasis's role with it, creating the chart war which even made national news and the front page of every tabloid newspaper. Blur made it to number one and Oasis number two. It was said that Blur won the battle, but Oasis won the war in the end. However, both bands have become icons of British culture. When Blood did win the chart war, they played Country House live on top of the pops with bass player Alec James wearing an Oasis t-shirt, keeping the feud alive. Tensions remained between the two bands well into the 2000s until Oasis eventually split up and Damon and Noel Gallagher became friends. Picture the scene. Mid-1990s. No mobile phones, no YouTube or music streaming channels like Spotify or iTunes no social media. British pop culture centred around what happened every week on legendary chart show Top of the Pops. DJs such as Joe Wiley were who we tuned into to find out what was hot and what was not. Top of the Pops was a stamp of success for all bands in the country and hosted legends of music weekly along with up and coming artists who had made the top 100. 
The weekly Talk of the Pops countdown was a TV pilgrimage that music lovers made every week, followed by a trip to record stores the next day for the latest chart toppers on CD or even cassette. Top of the Pops gave Britpop bands from around the country a national stage weekly to gain followers and fans and fight for a place in the top 10. So here are some of the other giants of the era. Post-Britpop bands such as The Verb, 
Radiohead, Stereophonics, Coldplay and Travis went on to garner stadium level successes with more experimental and harder rock sounds. It's fair to suggest that without Britpop, Travis's Man Who album would not have been made, nor would the groundbreaking album Parachutes by Coldplay, which changed the language of British music once again. Post Britpop UK music has seen a rise in anthemic, festival style choruses and a merge of electronic and experimental rock sounds. The witticisms of bands like Pulp, Blur and Space were replaced with more hopeful anthems of love and scathing commentaries on global cultures seen in the music of the Manic Street Preachers, Muse or Radiohead. Perhaps most similar to the more colloquial sounds of Britpop are bands like the Arctic Monkeys who led the commercial revival of local dialects and commercial music or the lyrical power of the mighty elbow who mix searing orchestral melodies and choruses with observations of everyday life. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed my rundown of Britpop. If you would like to know any more, I've left some links for you at the end of the video. So have a wee look through if you like and happy hunting. Bye!